I'm sitting here with two instruments. The larger one is what we call in Dutch or German a contrabass, in English a double bass. This particular instrument is the instrument I've been using for many years with the Bach Vereniging in almost all the performances. The smaller instrument is what we call a violone, a violone in G. But in Bach's time, the larger instrument was also just called violone. So we've got two instruments of different sizes, and if Bach calls for a violone, which one do you choose? How do you know which one to play? And that's a problem, or not a problem, it's a challenge to try and understand which instrument might have been used for a particular performance. And usually with the Bach Vereniging, I'm always playing with my 16-foot double bass. But Sigiswald Kalkin asked me to play this instrument for this one performance. Hopefully I don't get too lost between all the strings, because my normal double bass has four strings, and this has six. Also typical, it's got the frets which is, uh, you find also in the uh, gamba family. It functions the same as a cello could in this ensemble. And also in particular, there is no cello in this performance. We've sort of fallen to a sort of standard type of setup in the uh, continuo group where you have an organ, a clavicimbal, a double bass, a cello, maybe a bassoon, a teorbo. I think we've overlooked the fact that the violone like this was used a lot more in some of Bach's music. Not all of it, but definitely some of it. Gott stürzet und erhöht in Zeit und Ewigkeit. My role has been changed. Um, when you play the double bass, first off, in a performance, you definitely hear the double bass when it's playing. It's a big instrument and it makes a big sound. And mostly you are doubling the cello at the octave, so you're coloring the cello, you're coloring the orchestra. Here, I'm in the hot seat, as we say. Um, I'm playing the role, I'm playing recitatives, I'm doing uh, the seco recitatives, which are usually played by the cello. And at this point, I'm the string continuo instrument in the continuo group. This is completely new for me. Many years I've been listening to the recits, watching the words go by with the bass notes, but now I'm actually doing it. And I must say, before the project started, I was a bit nervous about it, because you have to watch the words, you have to react to the singer, you don't want to miss your entrance because you just play one note and then the singer continues. So it was, it's a very much a new terrain for me. I was trying to be very expressive with the rest of the team because it's a very expressive moment. And so Sigiswald told me, don't be too expressive, just do your function. So I was playing a bit like this. <laughs> giving it a lot of feeling. And he just wanted me to give the harmonic function. It's very simple. It's just what the text needs. It's not a concerto for violone, it's just a recitative, a seco recitative. I think it's very important playing the bass line is to have a clear idea of the harmonic structure of Bach's music because that's how the road travels. You want to follow the road, the harmonic road, and you have to have a clear idea of where it's going to. And that's very important in Bach's music. Mm -hmm. 